All right, this is what we're painting today. Fall, I love to paint fall. My favorite season to paint. Um, this is called my Fall Trio. It's on one of my surfaces from my website called Elegant Sign. I cannot wait to paint this with you. It's gonna be so super easy. Let's get started, everybody. In starting this uh, particular project, I have applied my coat of multi-purpose sealer, let it dry, lightly sanded it, applied two coats of uh, soft black, soft black with a dampened artist sponge, two coats after the two coats are dry, let each coat dry and then lightly sand it um, and then transfer on just basic lines on here. And we're going to start um, by basing in the petals of our uh, sunflower with summer squash and we'll apply two coats on here. I've got a little bit too much water in my paint here. So just all the way around each petal individually. I'm not going to stay on here and do each one because that just takes up camera time that we don't need to take up. But uh, get them all base coated in with two coats. The center we're going to uh, base coat in. Well actually I think we'll just leave it the soft black for now because I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do with the center. The apple over here we will base in or undercoat with moon yellow. We'll do two coats just to give it a, a nice smooth finish here. And let that dry and then we'll get a second coat on there. And then for our pumpkin, we're going to mix tangelo orange with that moon yellow. So I'm going to take some of this moon yellow over here and put some tangelo orange with it. I want my pumpkin to be orange, but um, this orange is a little more transparent. So I'm going to undercoat it with this mix of tangelo orange and um, moon yellow. And we'll do two coats. The stem we're not going to worry about for now. We want to get our, our pumpkin base coated in before we do our stem. So um, I will apply one coat with this mix. And then on top of this I will apply two coats of just Tangelo Orange. So we want to smooth out this base coat as much as possible when we apply it so that it doesn't have a lot of ridges and bumps and things like that in it. And so I will finish this up here and then I'm going to go off camera and just get all of my second coats on. And then when we come back, we'll be ready to add some uh, details on here. So after you get um, all of your base coats on, your two coats of Tangelo Orange on here after you have gotten your undercoating the way that you like it. Nice and smooth coat. And then the, um, the app two coats of Moon Yellow on the apple and two coats of Summer Squash on the petals of the sunflower. Um, then we'll come back and start adding a lot more detail into this. Alright, I'm going to go off camera and finish base coats. Alright, I've got my base coats on these two. They're still drying, but on the yellow, on the apple, now I've got my two coats of Moon Yellow on there, so now I want to add some red on here. So, um, 
I've got CAD red and I'm just going to um, like side load my brush with this color. Plenty of paint. I'm going to move this paint up our surface. We want to keep like right here next to where the stem goes yellow and uh, maybe where our highlight will be we'll kind of retain that um, yellow in there. So I've got um, quite a bit of paint in my brush and I've got water in my brush so I can go thinner as I go over this way. around and bring the color. I wiped the excess um, off of my brush after I did the big area so that I wouldn't have so much on my brush as I go to this area back here that I want to keep lighter and I wiped it off again. I'm keeping the side that has just water on it next to that um, area. Okay, so we're creating our apple there, and I'm going to let all of these dry, these dry, and add some detail lines on here. All right, all the base coats are in. They are dry. We're going to start on our sunflower here. Now, you can come in and transfer any lines that you need to, if you need to be able to tell what petal is on top and you can certainly do that. You can change them around. Whatever ones I put on top you do not necessarily have to have on top so um, it is completely up to you how you want your uh, petals to look. So I'll just put these on here for your benefit and just arrange your petals how you like. And, and as you can see I brought some of my paint as I was painting them into the center because I want when I paint my center for it to definitely cover up some of the yellow. So I, I didn't want my center to be quite so big to start out with because I don't know how big I'm going to make it in the end. All right, we're going to start adding some color to our um, sunflower here. We're going to use antique gold. Just load for a float. Use whatever brush is your favorite brush to use, flat brush, angle brush. If you're lucky to have some of these um, curved flat brushes, they're my favorites. I don't always use them in videos anymore, but um, they are my favorite brushes to use. So uh, if you have them, use them. If not, use whatever brush that you like. My next favorite brush to use would be um, a flat brush. So I want you to just... Um, pick what you like and stick with it. Use it. It's good to try different brushes, but if you uh, don't want to try a, a new brush, then just use what you like to use. Okay, um, we're using antique gold and we're going to um, put this color. Um, first, I'm going to start by shading next to where one lays on the other. I'm going to try and not paint over my pencil lines I just put on there and that way I can come back and erase them. Um, down at the center and bring it up just a little bit. So I'm going to do all the places that kind of go behind another petal first and just kind of walk it up into that petal. And to walk it up you've got to have water in your brush. So you've got to have the water and the paint. You're laying both down when you start because you're laying your brush down flat. Nice, easy, soft pressure. And then all your water has been laid back here so you can just move the paint right up that petal, however far you need it. Go back and load water and paint frequently because you need to have both in your brush when you're floating. You don't want watered down paint. You just need both of them on your brush and blended well together on your brush. So if you've not ever painted with me, I, I spritz my palette with water over here. I'll pick up some water. I'll pick up some paint. I work them together in my brush. So I've got a nice sheer 
color right there on my palette and however it looks on my palette is how it's going to be when it paints because no nothing can't get that off there nothing magical is going to happen between your palette and your piece so if over here on your palette you've got hard lines and dry paint and you know you're using too small of a brush and the paint's just a, a line that's exactly how it's going to paint for you so always be aware of how you're loading your brush because that makes a huge difference in how you paint so now on these other ones I'm just going to come back and put some of this down in the center of it and kind of walk it up need more water now I don't want to go all the way out to the edges because I'm going to highlight those edges out there Last one here. Just kind of walk it up that um, petal. All right, so we got to get this dry, so we can move on to our next step. I'm going to erase my lines on here. If I haven't painted over them, they will come off as as well as if my paint underneath was dry. If my paint underneath was wet, they probably won't come off. But I'm going to try and get them all off if I can. And we can still repaint, retain our petal shapes here. So we can see where everything is right there. What a fun sunflower. Okay, I want to deepen that um, shading with that antique gold. So we definitely want it a little bit darker these ones that are next to just make sure that your first layer is dry before you do this because if it's not you're just going to remove the layer that you just put on there. Okay, let's see. This one, I'm trying to see which ones I, I haven't done here since I didn't start out going in a row. I think I got them all. So now I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to be on the very tippy toe of this brush and I'm going to pull some 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 lines up in it in my sunflower petals. little or as few as you want. I'm just on the very chisel edge of the brush. We're still just using antique gold here. This one looks like it needs to be a little bit darker in here. And this one. A little bit darker. Alright. Go back to adding some lines in here. You can leave the lines completely off if it's not a look that appeals to you. You can also do this with a round brush or a detail liner. You don't have to use the edge of your brush like this, but I've got the brush in my hand already. All I have to do is turn it on its edge, but if you're getting too fat of lines, then just switch over to a a liner brush and add these in here. Okay, just a few little detail lines, nothing major. Okay, I want to come in here and add a little bit of orange into this flower with um, 
burnt orange. So I'm really going to thin it down on my brush and keep it nice and uh, a thin sheer color of paint. I don't want it to um, get too dark. Touch my paper towel because I want to get excess out of it. And I just want to come in here and put a little bit of this color on our petals. We, we don't have to do every place, but I think this is going to bring a little bit of color and fun into it. And make it just a beautiful flower. So let me just remove that. I got it over onto my petal. And I didn't quite want it over on my petal, so come back and redo it. Tap it with your finger or a mop brush. I generally use a mop brush, but I've got my finger right here, so I'm just going to use that. does not flow off of your brush well then you do not have enough water so and if you want you can pull some of this color up as well just a streak or two I'm trying to decide if I want to do all of the petals or if I want to keep some some of them a little bit lighter definitely want to do all the places where one is under another one. It's going to help bring some of our oranges over to our flower here. And I think that's going to be pretty good right there. We can always come back and deepen that if we need to. We're going to start adding some highlights on here now. Okay, so I'm going to keep the sunflower pretty basic and um, just a fun little fall design that won't take you a long time to create. So I'm not going to have any turns and curves in my petals. So we want to begin by um, highlighting the outside edges of our petals with some cat yellow and brighten them up. And we'll do along all of the edges here. This should be a pretty pretty quick design that you could make and hang on your front door for the fall. So we're going to do all of the edges. Cadmium yellow. It's already brightening them up quite a bit. Let's see, this one is on top here. brush flat, soft pressure, water and paint both in your brush. Here. 
And then we can take some of this cad yellow and maybe highlight next to some of our veins. We'll be brightening up this highlight. Again, I'm just using the very tip of my brush here, but you can go to a liner brush if you need to. I'm just showing you that you can do this with a brush if you just make sure the only thing that is touching it is the very, very tip, almost like a liner brush or a small round brush. Those few bristles. Maybe even less than that. That's all that's touching that when I'm when I'm doing that. All right, we're gonna add a little bit more bright highlight on here, and then I think we'll come back and deepen um, just a little bit. Okay, white will be our next color. And so we'll wanna be a little bit selective where we put this. Definitely want to put it along the edge where one is on top of another one. Kind of pull it in. We don't necessarily have to go all the way out to the tip, but you want to come out to the tip on some of them. Just a little bit on this one, not too much. He's really tucked behind. If you ever feel like you've picked up too much paint or too much water, all you have to do is go touch your paper towel and remove any extra that's on there. And uh, then just continue painting. No need to wash your brush or, you know, just. Alright, let's add a little bit of this in here. Up on the chisel. Super, super fun. Okay, I'm going to take that burnt orange and just in a couple places, I want to darken like back here. Definitely going to have to get my mop brush because I got too much water. So I can't tap it with my finger because it's just making a mess. All right, we really want some of this tucked down in here. We don't want our sunflower to turn orange, so don't get carried away with this orange. We don't. If you feel like it has gotten out of hand, you can take some of your moon, or not moon yellow, your um, cadmium yellow, and a little bit of antique gold, and make a wash with it. And you can just wash it over your 
your petals. This is not going to take our highlight down, so if you feel like you got things too bright and you want it to come back to more yellow, then this is how we do it. We don't have to paint over it and start all over. We just put some tints and washes of colors on here and we are good to go. We've still, we've still got our highlights and you can always mop in those highlights if you feel like it's taking it down too much and remove some of that that went on there as long as it's still wet. If it's dry it's not going to come off unless you re-dampen it. So I think that looks pretty good. Okay, let's take a stippling brush. This is all dry now. I've just got a Deerfoot uh, stippler. It's an Americana. It's a quarter inch, but you can use any kind of scruffy type brush that you want. And we're going to tap our soft black back in here and make it kind of textury up on those petals. your bright bright or dark dark center I guess I should say I'm just going back and shaping it a little bit better better for me Make your shape however appeals to you. Now I'm just going to wipe the excess paint off of my brush. Okay, and I'm going to pick up some antique gold. And I'm going to tap that right on here while it's wet. Kind of keep it more on that side. I think that will be our highlight edge. Highlight will be coming this way. And a little bit more on there. And I'll pick up a little bit of, I think I might go into some cad yellow. I had a little bit of white on my, my brush there. So it's antique gold, white, and cad yellow mixed in there together. I'm going to wipe my brush off. I want to pick up some more of that soft black and kind of blend it back in there a little bit. Okay, wipe my brush off and then get some and we'll just kind of add that in there right there This is just too solid of a color down here for me. This um, soft black. So I'm going to mix a little bit of cocoa with it so I can add a little bit of texture down in here.
Or you can add the antique gold and bring it over a little bit farther, I guess. Yeah, I like the antique gold coming over a little bit farther, so. We're going to base coat it in with soft black, tap in some antique gold, and then a little bit of cad yellow and a little bit white just on that highlight edge. So I think that will make that um, look really nice. And then we can um, take a tiny sheer float of that soft black. I mean, I want you to make this the sheerest paint you've ever seen. It's so much water and very little paint. I'd rather you start out light. And we can put a little bit of this maybe next to our center. Maybe not. And this will give it a little bit more depth here. You got to be very, very careful if you decide to do this. You can leave this step off but you have to be very very careful your paint has to be very sheer and you have to be side loaded because if you are more than side loaded you're going to cover too much of your petal I covered too much of that one there but this kind of floating is where it's really going to help help you learn how to um, you know be very limited with your paint and have more water so you're, you're basically floating with a wash but your brush is almost dry because you've worked it into the brush so much okay I think that's going to finish off our sunflower I think that uh, looks very nice. We're going to move on to our pumpkin now. Okay, let's start on our pumpkin here. Zoom in just a tiny bit. We are going to begin shading with um, burnt orange. And it won't show up a whole lot the fir at first. But we will be darkening it, so... So we want to start at the middle section here. And we're going to go beside it. And we'll bring it out a little bit into the pumpkin. And then this section. Here, this is uh, Georgia clay. I think I said burnt orange, but this is Georgia clay, which is the color we've been using the whole time, not burnt orange. I'm pretty sure earlier I probably said burnt orange, but this is Georgia clay. And come out a little bit here. Try and stay off of my flower petals. We'll go around those flower petals here pretty soon when this gets dry. And then this little section here. Right here, and again we'll go around those petals when it gets good and dry. Come all the way to the top. needs to go out a little bit more than what I have it. It's still pretty wet so I can't can't put too much paint down in there. Go along the bottom here. I'm just going to go along the bottom and the center part first because those are still wet. Well, I could probably go all the way across these over here dry. And we'll just come along the bottom. Oh, 
Put on this pedal. side here. I have to let it dry and then we'll come back and do the other side or the other petal. So we'll do one side on each petal that's laying over and then we'll come back and do the other side. Make sure you're dry because if you're not you're gonna remove what you just put on there. Now this right here is where the two meet is kind of a, the tip of a V. So we want to push the paint in there and kind of pull it out and round it a little bit so we can fill that in nicely otherwise it will leave a, a weird line in there that won't look very very pretty. Okay, so there is our initial shading. I know that pretty when we went around those petals that pretty much filled in that whole uh, section of the uh, pumpkin, but um, we'll, we can still add, we're still going to add some highlights in those sections. So this is just just the beginning. All right, we're going to go ahead and paint in the stem with some cocoa because I want to shade around it. And this is going to take a few coats, but um, we can go ahead and get a, an initial coat on here and then go ahead and shade underneath and then we can come back and put a second coat on there but for now that gets us um, where we need to shade with our Georgia clay around these sections. And you can kind of create your topper you know all that up there how it looks nice for you whatever whatever appeals for you that's um, how you can make your topper look all right I'm going to erase these lines here because we don't need them anymore we can tell where our sections are so we'll brush that away <clears throat> I want to deepen that shading a little bit so I'm going to get some soft black and add it to my Georgia clay um, a little bit of soft black so I'm going to dip into my Georgia clay a couple times and a little bit of soft black and just darken that up we don't want to make it too close to the soft black we want to keep it towards the um, burnt orange side we just want to you're almost dirtying up that um, paint so just take little tiny bits at a time till it gets to a nice little dirty orange color. Load some water on my brush here. And we're going to go back along these edges, but we're not going to pull it out like we did last time. We're going to stay pretty pretty close to that. Let me wide angle out so I don't get you off a camera shot.
just deepen. We might come back and walk this out a little bit because it's It's a little bit too confined in there. Go around the stem area. And I'm just going to really put this where it's um, the, the, the deepest areas of this. on the end of my brush here. So that really gives us some lots of fun stuff going on there. All right, I'm going to mix a little bit more because I need a lot more paint on my brush to carry along the bottom of this. Walked it up quite a bit. Now I'm very gently going to mop it. So I can just kind of smooth that out a little bit. Go over here and again do this around our petals. We'll try and keep it a little bit tighter this time. more on the tip of the brush going around these petals and I'm going to put a little bit of this up here on the very edge of that center section these center sections to look rounded <clears throat> instead of flat so we've got to put a little bit of this dark up here to start creating some more form okay let me put a second coat on my stem here so I can make it work paints on easier. Your paint will always work best for you, especially when you're base coating, if you add a little bit of water to it. So you can paint your stem on before you um, start shading on your pumpkin. coat on there. Do 
I don't really quite like the shape of that one. That's a little bit better. Looks like it's down in the, the groove of that section. Get that bristle off of there. I think we're looking pretty good here. All right, we are going to begin dry rubbing some highlights on here. And we're gonna start with some moon yellow. And we'll have antique gold, or not antique gold, uh, cadmium yellow. No antique gold <laughs> in Snow White. All right, so we're gonna take a dry, uh, stiff, bristled brush. Um, I prefer the filbert kind, but you could have one that's round as well, a domed one, they work wonderful. Um, this is a Sharf Moon, size six. I'm going to load it dry and remove a lot of the paint off of it. And then I'm gonna begin just gently rubbing in here in the center of this center section. Just up and down, a little bit in circles. We're gonna start leaving some of this paint on here. And uh, start out very lightly because um, you don't know how much paint exactly you've left on the brush and you don't want to come in here and create a very stark, bright uh, highlight on here. So we wanna just be um, easy when we start. And put some on this one and this one. These will be our brightest sections and I'm just going to go up on the corner and put a little bit in to those areas. They're not going to be near as bright as what these areas will end up being. I want to do the moon yellow a second time so I'm loading up that dry brush and removing to a paper towel and then again very soft pressure and just start out just soft back and forth for a little bit and then just start slowly giving it a little bit of pressure over here and take our brush now and just go straight into the cadmium yellow and this is a very bright yellow but it's also a transparent yellow it's going to mix with that um, moon yellow that's in there so I'm going to work it into my brush twice and then here we go very slowly or very softly I should say, not necessarily slowly. We're going to concentrate this now in the more center area of this front section. And maybe just slightly move it over to the right because our highlights coming from this way so it's definitely going to be brighter here. Okay, And we'll add some of it in this one. I'm going to get a little bit more paint in my brush. Start out softly. Over here needs more. 
you can go to a smaller brush. If you have a set of these, they come in um, lots of sizes. So you could um, go down to a smaller size, um, like a four or a two, and use those. I'm going to stick with this one. I don't want so I just dampened my eraser here and erased that paint right there so you can see how we are doing there okay so our next color we're going to load on the brush is going to be white so I'm going to load right onto that dirty brush and that white's going to mix with some of that yellow, which is good. We want it to do that. We'll lighten up that yellow without creating a very stark, bright white highlight. And again, very softly. And we don't need to leave a whole lot of this color on there. Okay, I want to get some white on this brush and maybe not remove it completely. And then I'm just going to tap where I want the really bright spot to be. And I might bring this highlight down just a little bit. It's just with the white. That's, it's mixed a little bit with the yellow, but it's mostly white there. Okay, because the light, I've kind of got it coming more this direction. It's coming across everything at that, at that angle. So I think um, I'm going to leave it there, I think. I might take just a tiny little bit of the... Um, Georgia clay and touch up right next to those areas to make sure I didn't get any um, of the light color down where I have my shadow area. But I think that's going to finish out the, uh, the bottom part of the pumpkin for now. We are going to come back and maybe add some tints of color on here, but for now um, that's all we're going to do to the bottom part. Let's go finish up the stem. Okay. Uh, our stem, we're going to take some soft black and we're going to begin shading here with it. So I've, I've drawn in my lines here. I made these little uh, upside down V's here and then a couple of straight lines and then uh, made my line for where my top is. So all of our shading is, our shadows are on this side so we're going to want to Keep our soft black uh, on this side. I want to go up into these V's with just the tip of my brush. And just kind of fill those in with some soft black. And then we'll go on the left side of these little lines that we drew in here. That one will probably not end up seeing much once we shade down that side. We can go underneath our edge of our top piece here. And we're going to have to come down this side here. So that little line that I put in there is not going to end up showing because we got to get this side dark. And 
and repeat anything that you need to repeat. I'm going to go along this edge here. I just want to carry those over a little bit. I don't want to put so much soft black up here that my um, stem fades into the background because soft black is what we um, painted the background with. Okay, that's probably pretty good. So. And we can always go back into these little V's and put a little bit more in there. Just using the very tip of the brush here. And make them look even darker in there. Okay. Didn't have the camera on there. Um, we're going to highlight well, I think I'm going to start with some antique gold. I started there with moon yellow, but it's just a tad bit too too bright. So let's start with some antique gold. If I get over into my background, not a big deal because this is a solid color background, so I can come in and touch up. Okay, I'm definitely going to have to come back over and touch up underneath here a little bit. Okay, so that was uh, antique gold. So now I'll just take my dirty brush right into some um, moon yellow. Them up here. And then just wipe my brush off and go into a little bit of white. And this will just give us a bright little highlight. place that you see that might have gotten lost in the highlight like this little bee area. I'm just gonna darken that back up and then take my burnt orange not burnt orange Georgia clay I call it burnt orange throughout this whole thing when you look at your pattern you're gonna say it says Georgia clay she said burnt orange oh my gosh I don't know when I type it up, I'll have to correct my burnt orange to Georgia clay many times. And that should finish out our 
pumpkin for now. Like I said, when we finish this, I'm going to bring some of the reds into this, and I'm going to bring a little bit more of the brighter oranges into this. So we have nice, good flow throughout the whole piece. So um, we're going to work and finish our apple next, and then add those those colors. Okay, let's finish our apple here. So we did that um, very sheer color of cad red. So now we are going to do the cad red again. Walk it up like we did the last time. Go along this outer edge. This will be the dark edge out here of the red of the apple. keep that pretty yellow in there. I've probably gotten paint on that so I probably won't be able to remove it. But let me try. Okay, I got most of it. That was that pencil line that I stuck in there. Um, grab a small round or a detail liner. I'm going to grab a detail liner here, which is mine. My size is 10-0 liner, so you use the brush that you like the best. We're going to thin down a little bit of that paint with some water. And we shall paint some of our lines in here. Oops. going to show up enough I think so let me get some of our Tuscan red this is the color we're going to glaze over it later and I'm going to mix it with the cad red to get that cad red just a little bit darker in color so I'm just going to get a little bit of that red on my brush and bring it over here and mix it in and let's see if these will show up a little bit better there we go It's kind of hard to follow the shape of the apple when it is behind something else. But do your best. Don't just bring them all straight. Because, you know, the apple's round and we need the lines coming up it to be a little bit more. And don't go into the highlight section. So we put some more layers on here. We probably won't see a whole lot of these, but
Okay, I think that looks pretty good for our lines. All right, we've got our base color or undercoat color, which was summer squash. I want to make sure that this stays pretty yellow down in here. I'm going to add a little bit of cad yellow to my brush. Just I just went right into it with that summer squash that was on my brush. I'm going to put some of this over here. Create a little bit of a lighter area on the apple over here. line there so just taking it down a little bit Let's go back with our cad red. We're going to get each layer is going to get darker, and we're going to add like with what we did with the lines there. We're going to mix the cad red and a little bit of the Tuscan red. The Tuscan red is really going to pinken up this color. So we're going to do one more layer of this on here. Wipe my brush off. Wipe it off again. I had too much water. And just kind of soften this right there where I have my lighter area. I want to keep it nice and, and, and soft. It's It can have a little bit of red over it, but we don't want um, enormous amounts of red on it because we want to try and keep it light over there. Okay, we're going to do. Um, Tuscan Red, next. And we're going to do it along this part of the apple. Bring it around, shape the apple. And we'll go along this edge down here. And I'm going to mop that. And I think I'll put some along this back edge as well. I want a nice red apple here. I'm just flaying it. Just flaying it. Okay, I'm going to let a little tiny bit of this. So I'm going to put a lot of water in my brush. Just kind of go down in that yellow. And I'm going to mop it. I, I don't want the yellow to be super bright. I might want it to be bright. I might change my mind here in a minute. Okay, I'm going to do that Tuscan red again. We're going to come back and deepen the shading here next to the pumpkin. Okay, 
Yeah, it looks pretty good. So you want to have some fresh, soft black on your palette. And fresh Tuscan Red. And we are going to deepen on here. Let's mix some Tuscan Red and a little bit of soft black. We're just going to create a dark red which looks pretty much like cranberry wine. And we're going to float this along back here. a little bit more on my brush. Alright, let me mop that. I got a little bit heavy edge there. Oh, yeah, you're on camera. I'm sure you'd like to see what I'm doing. Still not on camera. Goodness gracious. I have to wide angle back out here. I'm going to mop that. And I got a hard edge here. I don't like. Remove it. Okay, I got to get this dry so that I can redo that because that did not come out at all like I wanted it to look. So I'm going to take a little bit of cadmium yellow. here and here. Remember it's a transparent color. That's going to brighten that up. stem onto this too so all right let me see if I can do this better it needs to be just a touch darker I want it really dark and rich off. Gently mop it. Okay, that's super wet, so I'm going to have to let that dry a little bit. So while that's drying, I'm going to draw my stem in here. And that's not how I want it to look. I wasn't originally going to have the stem come way up out of here, but I don't think I will now. I think I'll keep it more there. Okay, our stem, we're going to paint it in with cocoa, and then we're going to streak some soft black and some...
Okay, so I thought my camera was rolling, but it was not. So I put some washes of, it was a mix of uh, Tuscan Red and Cad Red right here and right here. And a tiny bit right there. And then I took some Tangelo Orange and washed it on the top of that. And I think I might add just a little bit more. And then I put a little bit down here in some of the, the orangey, where I had the orange areas, a little bit on the center of that one and a little bit on the center of this one. Just brought in some of that orange over here so I could carry my colors across. So the red carried to the orange, the orange carried to that. We've got yellow here and yellow here, so it's all the way across. Um, I hope that was all that I missed recording. Mm my stem I don't know if it recorded but it is uh, cocoa with a little bit of lamp lamp black and then I just took my dirty brush into some white and tapped in some white in there I might add just a tiny bit more white to brighten that just a tiny bit so now I'm trying to decide on if I want to add any leaves I'm gonna put some white up here a little bit more if I want to add any leaves onto this and bring in another color. So let me think about it. Alright, so I did decide to add some leaves in here. I think it's going to add just that extra pop of color. If you don't want leaves on yours, you do not have to add this part. I recommend adding the, uh, especially these leaves here, at the end after you've painted the apple. Um, don't transfer on the lines here just wait until you've got the apple in okay so we're going to shade at the base of all of these and possibly the lower edges of them of, of these up here we're going to use black green so we'll go Here and along the back of this one and down this edge, I think. We'll come back and repeat all of this. Might bring this along this edge a little bit. All right, for uh, this turned one. We will do some black green right here. I'm going to take the water edge and kind of soften that out a little bit. And then we'll go back here along the back of the Come down this edge a little ways. And go ahead and go down next to the, the vein. And then this edge right here will have a little bit. And then this one. So these we're going to go around our beautiful petals that we painted in here. Take your time going around those petals. We don't want to have to touch up on them. If 
I based these leaves in with uh, leaf green. One of my all-time favorite greens because it, um, it has a tint of blue in it and I really love the color of it. So I'm going to go ahead and create the vein shape here. I could get a smaller brush to float these, but I'm going to deepen the shading on this one for sure. And this one. You want to make sure they're dry before you do this because you'll just start removing paint and then you'll be frustrated and unhappy so always make sure that your layers are dry that's one reason why I keep a small fan close by so I can dry things quickly Okay, so there's our shading on our leaf, and we can come back and add you know, a little bit more as we need to. I'm going to put a little bit right here where the, where the leaf is kind of bent as it goes. And I can put a little bit here. I think on this one I was going to put a turned edge. So... won't brighten up that edge when we highlight. So that is our initial shading. And I think it's going to be pretty good. We'll see if we need to darken it any when we get our highlights on there, but I think uh, that might be pretty good. Okay, we're going to highlight with Peacock Teal. That's going to be our first color. And I want to dry brush this on like we did on the pumpkin. So we're going to grab some brushes. I grabbed two two more brushes, uh, a small two smaller ones than I used before. So I'm going to start with um, I'm going to start with the, the medium size one here. Right, this is a size four. My other one that I used was a size six. So again, we're going to load the brush and offload. Now you want to make sure that your um, shading color you put on there is dry. And then we're just going to come in here and rub some of this color in on the leaves. I could go to a much smaller brush for these smaller leaves. And on this uh, very edge of this turned place, I'm just going to float some color on there. And I think I will float down here on this, this edge as well. And along this edge. I want those to be much sharper colors, so back to my... I'll keep this from spinning for right now. All right, on our big one here, we want to put some of this color in here. You can float all these colors if you want. 
but I just think this is going to give us some nice We will come back at the end and float the, the very outside edges probably, but I'm going to erase my pencil line if I can. Any of them that you've still got on there you want to erase. Alright, let's move on to the next one. I love this color for leaves. I just think it's simply gorgeous. Any kind of teal on leaves, and, and teal green was my favorite teal for putting on leaves, but um, they discontinued that color. But thankfully, we have this beautiful color that we can replace it with. pretty. All right, a little more on this one. Oops. Need to remove a little bit more of that paint. some kind of on this edge. That's why these chisel ones are so much better because you can get into some tighter areas with these. Ooh, don't those look so pretty? So pretty. Now I was going to put some yellow on here, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to go into some white and get a tiny bit of white on my brush and just mix it with that blue. Lighten up this blue and we can start putting a little highlight on here. Just a little bit. Don't, don't go get carried away with this. Barely, barely, barely rub it. I would rather you do just tiny bits than get too much and not be happy. I'm going to come back and put some teal on that side, I think. I think it needs it. I'll use a smaller brush to do that. brush. And I know this is my darker edge, but I need a little bit of teal on that edge. I think those leaves are beautiful. I don't think I'm going to um, 
add any more color. Well, I might go might go one brighter. One more brighter. Maybe a little more white. But you want to make sure you're continuing to use the same brush so that the paint can blend with that paint that's on there so you won't get really stark bright color on your project. Alright, just a little bit. Okay, I think that's going to work out pretty good. I like that. I like it a lot. So, I think that's all I'm going to do to that. Now I'm going to create my little veins in here. Okay, so let me get a little leaf green out. I'm going to mix uh, the leaf green. I was going to mix it with the black green, but let me mix it with the teal green. See if I like that. That's too bright. Alright, leaf green and black green. I've got a little bit of teal still in my brush, but we're just going to make kind of a darkish color green. And I've got too much paint in my brush. Let me clean it out. Reload it. I'm going to keep a nice fine tip here. And then we'll just bring our stems a little bit more black green I think need to be just a touch darker all right so we're going to create some viney stuff going on here Putting some of this teal green on here. This was mostly black green, but I couldn't really see the definition here. Oops. Got some white in there. I don't want that. leaf green in here too. A little bit of variety of color. Alright, I'm going to put just a little bit of a highlight next to although well, I probably don't really need to.
here. Ugh. Black green. Don't want black green. I'm just picking up a little bit of white on that dirty brush. I've got all my greens on it. My leaf green, my black green, my teal green. So I'm just blending some of that white into the very end of it. Trying to anyway. I don't have near enough water. We're going to put a little bit of this uh, teal green, I think. We're going to carry it into our design a little bit. Probably got too much vines going on around that uh, thing. I think I will try and dry brush this color in some places. So let's put some down here. I guess this is dry rubbing, not dry brushing. darker than what I want. So I'm going to remove it. Right, I'm going to mix a little white with it so it will stay a lighter blue. Alright, I'm going to put a little touch of it on the apple. I don't like that either, so I think I'm just going to float it. So, I'll take my teal. It's peacock teal is the color. Create a washy float of it. That means there's a lot of water. Just a little tint of color. be floated underneath that so you 
just a touch more color in my Center, but we'll put some in here. Yeah, I like to put some in my petals. I mean, this is just the very sheerest of colors here that I'm, I'm putting on, so. A lot of color. I don't want that much color. finish this project up. I'm not really too happy about that uh, vein going up in that leaf, but let me just darken it. Nope, I need to shade underneath here, create a little bit of a shadow with this leaf. I need to go in here and erase my, my graphite lines that might help how this looks. gonna finish that out. I think it looks beautiful. I love the colors. Of course, I love painting fall, so anything that's got fall colors in it is always gonna make me happy to paint, so I love it. I hope that you love it. I still feel like I need to straighten out this vein here a little bit.
It looks very turned here. separate these two just a little bit better. And that looks pretty good. It doesn't look like I got all my graphite lines off right here. I must have painted over it. Okay. There we go. I am going to call this a done project. I love it. Beautiful colors. So fast and easy to paint. I really hope that you paint it. I can't wait to see uh, your painted pieces on your favorite surface. And this surface comes from my website. It's my elegant sign surface. So um, paint it on what you like or if you want this surface, that's where it's available. And um, I can't wait to see yours. Thank you guys so much for painting with me. If you are watching on my YouTube channel, please give me a thumbs up like and share and uh, just pass my videos on to whoever you want to pass them on to. I, I want everyone that wants to paint to just enjoy my videos. So um, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much everybody. Bye bye.